Okay, Cat. Yeah. Sorry, you weren't part of this next part of the episode, but we got to roll on. So, folks, we got Catherine Tabor, followed by Anna Graves. So, Matt, I hear you love Clone Wars. Oh, yeah, I love the Clone Wars. And I know this uh, this last August or so, you got to uh, meet several Clone Wars people and see a lot of them. Yeah, but I think all of them, didn't we? I think I have uh, two of them here that uh, you're going to get to meet now that I don't think you got to see there. What's the, who's that? Uh, well, uh, Catherine Tabor, I don't believe, was there. Uh, had me. No, I don't remember seeing her. And um, Anna Graves, who I believe is your favorite interview ever on, uh, on Bombad Radio. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I don't know. That's, so, uh, that's that's tough because Jennifer Hale was really good too, but I've definitely listened to Anna Graves more. Well, Anna Graves is like the the mom that's really excited mm-hmm. about everything. Yeah, which is fun to listen to. And you know, with recent news, she must be distraught. <laughs> <laughs> and if you if you listen to actually, um, go check out our friends at Rebel Force Radio. They they have a eulogy for for Anna Graves' character on Clone Wars, which yes, she died, folks. I need um, to listen to that like today. This eulogy is amazing. Uh, check it out, folks. And uh, we aren't going to try to do something like that here. We're going to we're going to do a follow up to what we already did. But yeah, yeah, that that eulogy is amazing. Check it out. Support Rebel Force Radio. Yes, I'm willing to support my rivals. <laughs> hey, they're cool guys. We oh, saw yes, they them are. C six as well. Oh yes, even though they teased me. Why don't you tell them what they did to me? What they did to you? with? Oh, gosh, when uh when we took that picture of you, and uh. They said that you were you were gunning for them and you're gonna try to be the competition. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, get ready to talk about some Clone Wars. So first thing we're gonna do, right. we're gonna have our interview with Catherine Tabor, and we're discussing games for soldiers and some of our recent activities. This is uh, my friend Matt. He is a big fan. So hi, Matt. He is joining. Hello. Me today. How are you? Ah, uh, tired. <laughs> oh, oh no. Okay, so uh, the last time you were on, you talked a bit about uh, your Games for Soldiers charity and so on, but recently you got to do a uh, very special treat as far as uh, Clone Wars goes. Where were, were you part of the USA, um, the USO visit in San Diego? I was, um, and it was it was really exciting. It was actually something, I, I don't know if you guys know this, but James Arnold Taylor, a.k.a. Obi-Wan, is a big supporter of the troops as well. Um, he's actually done something for the USO before. He's gone to Japan, and I think he's going again this year. So it was something that he and I really had always talked about trying to do and wanting to get done. And um, our wonderful PR person for Clone Wars, Tracy Canobio, uh, set it up and arranged it so that um, Matt, a.k.a. Anakin, Ashley, a.k.a. Ahsoka, uh, James, myself, and Dee, um, as well as our director, Dave Filoni, and our producer, Carrie, got to go to the Marine Corps Air Station in Miramar, California, and not only um, do a special screening uh, where we got to show a couple of episodes to the families and the children and some actual soldiers, but we actually got to tour the base as well and um, check out some really cool aircrafts. And it was it was all in all an amazing day that I will absolutely never forget. So was it? Um, did it help enhance your experience? Because for Games for Soldiers, you you know you've already been collecting games and other things for for soldiers and shipping out overseas. Did this help enhance your perspective or? Did you find out new opp- did you come up with new opportunities or new ways that you can enhance your your charity and so on? Well, I actually probably more than that came up with extra um, some extra people who I'm going to be sending boxes to. I, I met a couple of families who have, you know, um, either in one case a son and in another case a father currently deployed. So it actually gave me more people who need boxes. Um, so I'm going to have to somehow enhance my donations outside of there. So, um, but I myself, uh, I am what they call an army brat. Um, my dad was in the military while I was growing up. So I've been on bases, you know, a, a lot of my life and, and kind of have an understanding of that. But just once again, to be around families, uh, of, of soldiers who are currently deployed, it just really makes you remember that, you know, we, we have it really great here, and uh, it's it's really due to the military protecting us, keeping our keeping us free. And uh, we need to, whenever we can, let them know that we're thinking about them and that we appreciate it. Because it's so easy to forget uh, that that's you know that that's going on, and you know, and we are here in our you know in our comfortable houses and going to the mall and all that stuff. And there's 
there's a bunch of people who are separated from their family and living in conditions that aren't so great, and I think it's really important that we all just let them know we're thinking about them. You know, last time I talked to you was in prep for, you know, the holiday season with uh, Games for Soldiers and you preparing for, for that big rush. So what's your, what's um, the current rush or current uh, project for Games for Soldiers? What are you, when's your next ship date and what are you looking for in particular nowadays? I have, um, I always do a big push uh, around November, um, trying to get things in, uh, you know, in there for the holidays. And I'm a really small operation. I mean, it's primarily just me boxing stuff up and, um, you know, and then I, I rely on donations uh, of not just games and comics, but also my parents help me with the shipping and all of that. Um, so once I do that sort of big push in November, and it was really great because I had, uh, I had gotten a lot of donations from... Um, uh, Old Republic Radio had uh, done a, a donation drive, and that was amazing. A lot of their listeners um, sent stuff in, and we had a ton of games. So I was able to send out, I think, about 14 boxes around Christmas time. Um, but what happens every time I do that is then uh, another, you know, another guy or girl overseas will see it and say, "Hey, where'd you get those games?" And then I'll, you know, I'll get uh, a letter from them requesting some. So now I have another group that I would love to get something out to as soon as possible. I like to do something in the spring. Um, and, you know, I just really, I always need PS3 and Xbox 360 games the most. Uh, you know, those are the current platforms. And by this point, usually they have those consoles over there. I can always also use um, PSP games still uh, and comic books, other books or DVDs that you think um, might be interesting to you know, that demographic um, of our soldiers, which, you know, ranges anywhere from 18 up into their 40s. So it, it's a pretty wide demographic. But, uh, um, you know, I don't send stuff that's too kid oriented or anything, <laughs> if I can help it. But, um, you know, really, it's the the biggest demand is always for PS3 and Xbox 360 games. So, and, you know, and I have people who send me one game that they're done playing and that one game can help, you know, fill a box. Uh, that otherwise, you know, would have less. So whether it's a company who wants to send me a box full of games or one person who said, you know, I'm done playing this game, I've completed it, I'm not going to play it again. And uh, you can put it to good use by sending it to us and we'll, we'll get it to some soldiers who will really appreciate it. And judging from reactions and photos on your site, you've gotten a lot of, well, they've gotten a lot of great use from soldiers and have helped uh, lift the spirits of lots of soldiers overseas. The idea of being away from your family and away from home, and a lot of times, you know, some of these some of these guys are uh, stationed in areas where they have absolutely nothing. So, you know, in their downtime, there's nothing for them to do, and I want them to have a chance to relax and enjoy themselves for a little bit. And the games just tend to really be the perfect answer to that. Also, DVDs are great, though. I can't tell you how many people have told me that they set up movie night, you know, over there um, for their unit, and you know, once a week they watch a movie and so you were saying how you were setting up dvd nights and so on so people can actually send you dvds and stuff now too yeah i mean um the soldiers you know any kind of entertainment i think is is really appreciated so if you've got cool movies that you're not watching anymore um can't really take vhs anymore i get asked that every once in a while but okay so then of course to send you stuff um you just visit gamesforsoldiers.com and all the information is there on the website as always yeah, I actually don't have the address on there, um, but I have multiple emails where you can email me and let me know. Uh, for instance, if you're in Southern California, I can usually arrange a pickup. Um, and otherwise, we can talk about the best way to get the games to me. So if anyone's okay. interested, there's a couple of emails on there. It's very simple to click. I think it's donate at gamesforsoldiers.com. Okay, it's game, donate at gamesforsoldiers.com, and they can send you information. And if they're overseas, they can always buy stamps. And or promote the website, promote ways, you know, on Facebook and Twitter and so on, just to use the social media to help uh, get the word out, because that's the biggest thing, get the Absolutely. word out so people can, can know what to do. So um, in case you couldn't tell folks, we had some technical difficulties just a few. Uh, with that, that little part, but we were able to talk to her a little bit more after we resolved the issue somewhat. So now a little bit about her on Clone Wars. It would be more stable on my connection. I live in Alaska. <laughs> I'm on wireless. Do? I do. You're in Alaska right now? That's so cool. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Utah, and I'm on a wireless connection, so it's not the best. I guess oh. that's true. That's, it keeps on going up and down. That darn Utah. <laughs> yeah. But it is snowing, and it looks beautiful outside, so. It right is on. not snowing here. 
Uh, if you were in Southern California, if it started snowing, you'd be panicking. Also, does, can it even That's snow true. there? I don't, I don't, I don't think I ever remember it snowing here in all the years that I've lived here. Okay. I don't think so. But I'm usually in Georgia for Christmas, so it sometimes snows there. Really? Okay. Right yes. <laughs> so I guess we're going to have a couple of questions that, um, oh, sorry about the door. I'm in a public area. That's okay. Uh, so uh, the first time we ever asked you questions was, uh, well, well over a year ago now, a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Somewhere around there. And uh, we asked you some questions about the character of Patty, which you've gotten to play. You've also got to play Leia and so on. So do you feel that you relate to the characters of Padme and Leia and that has helped you um, portray them as well as you have? Oh, definitely. Um, I, I mean, I really, not only do I, I love Star Wars, you know, one of the reasons I love Star Wars is, is the characters. Um, in fact, I think there was just a quote this week from J.J. Abrams, who, you know, of course, is slated to direct the new movies, who said something about you know, something to the effect of like explosions and everything mean nothing if you don't care about the characters. Um, and I, you know, the reason I loved Star Wars in the first place was the characters and especially Padme and Leia. So I, I definitely, I think that, that that helps that I have that affinity towards them. And also because, you know, I have a vision in my head of, of how they should be portrayed. And it's important to me that if I have any say in it, that that, you know, that that comes across, especially with Padme, um, that she's not a pacifist and that she she actually is a very strong woman with a lot of bravery and integrity, and uh, and I I want to always make sure that that's coming across. Okay, Matt. So yeah, Matt has a question. Okay. Sure. Uh, so with this last uh, episode of the or last arc of the Clone Wars, we had a lot of people die. Is it comforting for you to know that Padme lives through it all? <laughs> well. You know, uh, unfortunately, she doesn't live through it all, so... <laughs> true, true. The show, at least, she makes it through. Yeah, but, you know, we don't really... As far as where the show is going and, and what's going to happen with the show and everything, um, you know, I, we just don't really know much of anything. And, I, I, you know, I do know, obviously, that, you know, I know what happens in the movies, so I, I hopefully, you know... But I just... You just never know, and it's... It, it's... It's just just to even lose characters on the show that you care about um you know but i think that that's one of the kind of cool things about clone wars that they're pushing on that a little everything's not ending necessarily sometimes people that you really care about or admire um, are lost but yeah i mean it is it's i you know i get through the show but still was there was some way to you know, even change and i'm always a decoy it wasn't really Padme. <laughs> and I imagine she's living on some planet somewhere. Right on. But I don't think that that happens. I don't think George would agree <laughs> with me. <laughs> <laughs> so this season, we really have not seen much of Padme at all. Um, I know the, the main arc that was teased, at least in the trailers, is the one that was bumped from the, from this season. But I'm assuming we're going to be getting a lot more Padme in the next season. We're, we're, we haven't seen the end of the big Padme arcs, have we? No. I mean, well, you know, again, as crazy as it sounds, oftentimes uh, you guys know as much as we do about what's going on. And as far as the chronological order and how they change things around, those decisions are made, at, you know, at the last minute and at, at a, uh, a pay grade above mine. So I don't usually know too much what's going on. I just know that um, the show was originally, you know, intended to explore the time period of the Clone Wars, but from the different perspective of uh, all different kinds of characters and different sides of the universe and different, you know, aspects of the story. So as much as I wish that Padme was always there, I do know that it's interesting for the audience to have... Uh, to have some of those different perspectives and, and and they just started doing these story arcs and so that's kind of what's happened and it's changed a little bit from season one and season two where they were more standalone there were some arcs but more standalone episodes um but just from a personal perspective my favorite episodes still always involve not just padme but when i get to when you know when obi-wan and anakin are in there um and ahsoka and rex and you know and yoda those are still my favorite episodes. Those are the characters I still identify with the most. most. And, and actually the stories that even though we know what happens, I still find myself enjoying seeing the stories of those characters explored the most. Awesome. So I guess we're going to wrap up with a couple, you know, real quick questions. Is, uh, sure. So um, how are you at bowling? 
Oh my gosh. Well, uh, did you see the celebrity bowling? <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> okay. So I was so, I'm not normally a nervous person. Um, and I'm usually fairly athletic. I just, you know, naturally am. But so I, I agreed to do that. I was very excited. And then before we were getting ready to do it, um, Tracy Knobio, again, our wonderful PR person said, oh, by the way, you, you might want to practice because, you know, Dave takes this pretty seriously. And then I got so nervous. So the whole time that we were um, shooting that day, you don't really see any of it, but I was, I was literally on the edge of my seat, just about to throw up every time my turn came up. And, uh, and you don't really also see this either, but I bowled really, really well or really horribly. So I had tons of strikes and like, you know, almost had a turkey for all you bowlers out there. But then right before I did, someone said, get a turkey. And then it just threw me off. So I really am not a good bowler as far as, you know, having some kind of specific form. And I, you know, like my dad and everybody was like, here's what you got to do and telling me all the moves. And, you know, I was like, I can't learn this all in one day. I just need to use the force, which is what I did. So uh, I was an amazing bowler or a really terrible bowler. But I was the second highest score on our team. And for a while, I was the highest. But D is actually the real deal. So. Yeah. And in that video, they focused a lot more on, uh, on Ashley. And, right. Uh, right. Her, Ashley, her troubles. Yes. Yeah. And I think Ashley and Chris had worked together on um, Course for the Force. So there's some history there. Okay. So I guess last question is uh, to your fans and to the listeners of this thing. Um, what, do you have anything you want to say to the fans of Clone Wars, the fans that you work with video games, uh, the supporters of Games for Soldiers? Anything you want to say uh, for your final words before we uh, let you get off to your audition? Thank you. Well, you know, as usual, I just really want to thank everybody for, you know, uh, working in the Star Wars universe. You just, you you know, the, the fan base is just something different from, from anything else out there. It's just really special. And we just appreciate them going on this journey with us and... You know, I, on a personal level, always look forward to just more Star Wars in my own my own life and my own career. And I appreciate everybody uh, being there with us and, and, and supporting us, and especially people who support Games for Soldiers. Again, it's such a uh, it's such an important thing I think for us to do, and um, it's a it's a it's a simple thing to you know put a game in the mail if you're done with it. And I promise you, it will make someone really, really, really happy. So, <laughs> so I just want to say thank you as always. And um, I'm sure everybody's excited and nervous as I am about the future of Star Wars that we we now have had so many announcements since we last talked. Um, it's it's a really exciting time for Star Wars, and uh, I'm glad to be a part of it. Well, thank you for this. Um, if we lost anything in that little burst of if you connections, I'll just send you an email to get like contact information for Games for Soldiers. Um, okay, if, sure. If you don't mind, and so get so we can fill that in for you, so we can get that word out. And uh, thank you for letting us uh, have some of your time. We know you're extremely busy, and you're going to run off now. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule, and uh, well, well, we I, the fans love it. And I feel like I uh, I didn't get to talk much to Matt about Alaska. Now I'm so intrigued. So um, we'll we'll have to do this again, so I can find all about Alaska. Jeremiah's from Alaska too. I'm from Alaska so. too. I'm just I'm just in college. You are? In he lives five minutes away from me when he's up here. Wow. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but Deadliest Catch is one of my favorite shows. So oh, right I was on. just hey. like, I I imagine if I ever stop acting, I was going to be a, a crab fisherman. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm guessing that's probably not going to happen. But you know, I like to I like to think about it that sometimes. Would definitely be so. interesting. Well, if you ever want to be on again. If you ever want to be on again and want and have you know plenty of time to talk, we can talk Alaska. We can talk all that. I am perfectly fun, willing to talk to you as much as you want. Well, let's um let's think you know as it gets closer to Comic Con and stuff, and maybe if there's more stuff you know announced Star Wars wise or some other stuff coming out or something, we, and we have more to talk about, definitely give me a shout. This last these last couple of months were just um I was out of town multiple times, and so it really kind of you know um. I was out of town shooting something in Georgia, and then I went back to Georgia for Christmas, and so it was just this crazy time. But as of right now, I am here um, in town, and so maybe closer to the summer we can talk again. Okay. I get married in May, but we'll find time. Oh, wow. We'll okay. Time. Well, congratulations on that, and then I will talk to you maybe after you're back from your honeymoon. I'll, I'm okay with this. Okay. <laughs> I think she'll want to talk to you too. So have a good day, and uh, good luck in the audition. Thanks. Thanks, and bye, Matt.
See ya. Thanks. Bye. So that's Catherine Tabor. Uh, so, so Matt, now you've been able to see how we do some of these interviews. Do you see why some of them are so short and and well, and hectic and how busy these people are? Well, absolutely. I mean, it's not it's not surprising at all that, um, you know, they're busy. She had what about twenty twenty five minutes to actually talk before she had to get out the door. And that's giving us some extra time because she originally said about ten fifteen, and we were able to get a little bit more. But yeah, and she'll be on again. She wants to talk to us about Alaska. I think we'll just have to oblige. Well, you know. We we know a little bit about Alaska. Maybe when I'm in Alaska this summer, um, I Steph and I can come to your house and we can record. We can talk to her, and uh, Steph can be the outsider to Alaska. And we can just talk to her about Alaska. Sounds fine. Yeah, and then then you you your mom will be like, "What are you doing? Like, We're talking to a famous person. <laughs> she hot? Yes. Yeah, right. I'll shut my door and say no. Stay away. <laughs> and then Michael's like, Matt, 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 Matt. Oh, dude, Matt. He, he came in my room like the minute before you called me to show me this game that he got today. And I'm like, no, you, you have to go away. You can't bug me for like the next hour. Just go. <laughs> well, that's, so that's Catherine Tabor. We always love talking to her. She's fantastic. And it's kind of sad we haven't gotten to see her much this season at all. Because the Clovis arc seemed to be the arc that was focusing mainly on her. Mm -hmm. Beyond that arc, I'm quite sure I've seen her this season, but no more than like a scene or two, right? Man, I don't even know. I'm trying to think of if I've seen her this season. Because she might have been there a little bit for Onderon, like when they were in the Senate. Maybe, um, but I don't know if she said anything. The Maul arc, she sure wasn't there. No. She uh, wasn't the there droid arc, droid definitely arc. not. Younglings arc, no. No. So I'm pulling up IMDb to see if they've credited her at all this season. Were there other arcs? Um, I don't know. Let me look at my thing here. So let's see, we started oh, with a revival. Numbers, never mind. We started with a revival. Right. And then we had. Did we have the. Was the Mon Calamari arc this one? Or was that last season? That was season? last season. Okay. So it went in revival, then it went Onderon. After Onderon was Youngling, right? One second. And then Youngling was. And then there was two episodes of the Droid arc. And then there was two episodes of the Droid arc. And then there was Mandalorian. Yeah, she revival, really hasn't been in the season at all. War on Two Fronts. Gathering. Test of Strength. Yeah. She might have been at the very end of of uh, revival, actually. You know, when they're in the Senate chamber, when they're with Did Palpatine. They, uh... so, don't send any more. Did the Jedi need to stop chasing him now. He, she might have been there. I don't remember seeing her though. I remember Windu and Yoda and Palpatine. Well, her voice has undoubtedly been there because she's she not credited plays in lots there. of characters. She plays lots of characters. Well, that's true, and this is IMDb. You know how they work. And a lot of voice actors, you don't really know what they're doing. True. So, Matt, are you ready for the next interview? Yes. It'll be fun. Not that the other one wasn't, but, you know. <laughs> she talked really fast, man. She is a voice actress. That's true. A really fast one, and apparently a really good bowler. Yeah. <laughs> I watched that one well, yesterday. <laughs> I was wondering why, if people don't know, we're talking about like the celebrity bowling on the Nerdist, which was the Nerdist team, which had uh, like Chris Hardwick and Yakko, versus the Clone Wars team, which had Dee Bradley Baker, Dave Filoni, Ashley Eckstein, Catherine Tabor, R2-D2, and a bunch of clones. Yeah, but they didn't get a bowl. I, see, I wanted to see R2-D2 bowl it in for the win. But... <laughs> and of course, Team Nerdist also had that little kid, Gil, and so on. Um, and uh, just so you know, if you haven't seen it, you should watch it, but the Clone Wars team wins. We'll, we'll say Cat Tabor is the reason why. <laughs> well, if she was the second highest score on their team, I'd say she was a decent amount of the reason why. And we didn't really see Dee Bra um, bowl that much in that, that clip, did we? No, but he did seem to be like the beast on their team. Like the actual Well, yeah, plus guy. he had all his clones supporting him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He had, he had his backup brothers. But now, let's have our little chat. With Anna Graves, voice of Satine and other characters in Clone Wars. May her character rest in peace. Hey. Hey there, welcome back. How's it going? Oh, things are going great, except for my... Uh, good question, have you seen Clone Wars today? Yes, I have. Were you screaming at the TV like the rest of us? <laughs> you know, it was early, I watched, because I... I uh, <laughs> I watched the East Coast feed, so it was like 6.30. Um, 
I, I, I dug it. I kind of dug it. I was. Uh, oh, I loved it. I just, I just, when the ending happened, I was like, I need to know what happens now. Yeah. No. And, and you know what is cool, actually, is that's kind of how I felt after the the last couple of episodes in the Mandalorian arc, and then um, today was definitely, ooh, to catch a Jedi. Oh yes. Yeah. Okay, so no, this was... introduction, um, you know who I am. Um, <laughs> yeah. Kat's not with me today. Instead, I have my, my friend Matt, who's, we'll say he's a big fan. Hello. Sweet. Hey, Hello, Matt. Uh, our... Me. <laughs> <laughs> our interview with you is actually one of our um, top interviews we've done. We actually had a, an award show for the for the podcast, and yours was second place. And so Matt was the main re- main one like promoting an episode like crazy. No and so way. he's on for our follow-up. That was my favorite. Oh, very cool. <laughs> oh, cool. So he's well, God, excited. I, I, yeah. I hope we uh, do as well this time. Just chatting. <laughs> no pressure. No, no, no. Yeah, right? <laughs> well, we can always do better. We, we got to shoot for first place. What won first place? Um, we had um, an actor by the name of Andrew Lawden, who is a uh, stuntman for episode one on. But in his interview, he's also a stuntman for Marvel now. And so he, know. hopefully by accident, but he, he told, well, that wasn't accidental. He, he spoiled Iron Man 3 and Thor 2. Oh no! And like, oh, no. and then all the news sites got hold of it and spread it everywhere. And then oh. Disney Marvel started talking to him, and I was like, I can't take it down. You know this, right? Because <laughs> I, I, I asked him literally, like, I know you can't spoil about this. Can you tell us anything? He's like, well, I can spoil a lot. And he started talking. I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna record. Wow. <sighs> yeah. 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 You gotta be careful <laughs> with that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so welcome back to the show. It's hey, been a year. Yes. Or pr- almost a year by now. It has been. <laughs> and uh, I have to say, the last time you were on, you, you mentioned how we'd have to talk to you at the end of this season of Clone Wars. <laughs> and Matt can attest to this. As soon as you said that, we hung yeah. up. We, we, we posted the episode. I'm like, Satine's dead. <laughs> dead. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. It was true. It happened. Um, <laughs> you know, and I, I, I've known for a long time and it's hard, like, you know, like you were saying, not to spill the beans, but, uh, it's, it was a big deal. It was a big deal. And it was very well done. It was. It was. It was, it was a very... What, what did and, you think? You what know, did you guys think? Y'all want to hear what you think. Oh, well, for me, I knew it was going to happen by then. Cause like, I, I, when you saw the trailers and so on, you're like, I, I, I knew I figured Satine was going to die. Yeah. But it didn't stop it from affecting me. Like literally, when that was happening, my fiance and I were basically nearly crying. We're like, it just yeah. like when it happened, it was like, bam! Like, whoa! I don't. I knew it was happening, but it, it hit hard. Well, the way that it was done, and I mean, you know, just right in front of Obi Wan, just to you know, literally for nothing except to for Darth Maul to uh, get a chance to watch him suffer in that moment. It just it was really emotional. It was horrible. And judging from the photos that we saw from James Arnold Taylor, it was emotional for you to record it. It was. It really was. I uh, I really liked Sadine a lot for many different reasons, and uh, was sad to see her go. So I um, but but I, shortly after we had recorded the episode, um, I made my first and only trip up to the ranch and got to visit Dave Filoni and 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 everyone and and uh, take a tour and. And you know, sit in the theater and watch um, some upcoming episodes from season five. And um, I, I actually, what did I see? I saw saw some episodes that were going to air later in, in season four and uh, and in season five. And it was kind of funny because that kind of took the sting out of it. You know, like we were all joking about how we had just recorded this episode where this tragic thing had happened. But um, but yeah, you know, it was the show must go on. Indeed. Let's hope it continues going on with season six. I know, right? Yeah. The silence is scary. Well, I'm sure Dave will uh, say yay or nay or, you know, let everyone know as soon as that's an official thing. So. Yeah, uh, but the silence on Detours and 1313 and everything except for movies is just like, (laughs) I want to know what's the point of celebration if I saw all this stuff there and got teased. I need to know now. I know, I know. I have some friends that work on detours, and I'm like, man, when can I watch this show? And I, I there's not much information coming out of those people either. So, um, so you need to go find Jennifer Hale and poker until she tells you, or <laughs> Mr. Faison or Weird Al to say, tell me now. I need to know. Right. So, I mean, no matter what, the shows are being made. You know that. So, um, 
they're working on them. They're working on, you know, you've seen people going in and recording Clone Wars. So it's just uh, how we get it. It's the determined. Exactly. Exactly. So, Matt, what did you think of Satine's death? Uh, I thought it was epic. You know, that it was done right in front of Obi Wan, like she said, was just crazy. And it was at the same time very Darth Maul, you know, which I Mm -hmm. thought was awesome because he's kind of a cool bad guy. Yeah. But uh, it was sad. Steam was cool. I thought the biggest. I thought the biggest twist was not that he, he that he didn't want to kill Obi Wan. That he wanted to make he wanted to break Obi Wan. He wanted to break him yeah. emotionally, not kill him at all. He just wanted him to suffer. He did. A, he did a good job of it. Yeah, and I kind of felt like when he was when Darth Maul was watching the Twilight go down, he was sort of thinking, "Man, I hope he survives this crash because then I won't get to play with him." <laughs> <laughs> you know, you could see the the glee in his eye, and uh, and frankly, it's a miracle that Satine and, and Obi Wan uh, survived that crash at all. So <laughs> that's true. So I have a request from a from our actually the the owner of our website. He's not the owner of the podcast, but he's the owner of, of our website. His name is Brian. He his birthday is coming up at the, at the end of March, and this Happy episode will birthday, air. Happy birthday, Brian! Well, what, what, he, what he wanted to do was he was telling me, like, he, he wanted to know if we could have Satine talk from the dead to talk to him. <laughs> he wants oh, his God. actual words were kind of – his actual oh, words are not appropriate for, tel- for, for the podcast, but – I'm going to light some candles right now and see what I can do. Hold on. <laughs> Find some. Well, this one smells like strawberries, but it's okay. It'll do. Um, Brian. Brian, happy birthday, Brian. I understand you were born years ago, around this time. I too was once born, dust to dust. I lost her. I lost her. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for that. That'll make his day. (laughs) Okay, so we're gonna have some follow up on the last time. The last time you were on, we talked a lot about many different subjects, many different things. Um, Hopefully, we can talk about lots of, well, most of them. Sure. And the first one being, what did you think of Prometheus? <laughs> you know, you were really he, looking forward to that one. You know, what's funny is I was very much looking forward to it, and I um, shortly after I talked to you guys, uh, I, I think that was the it had just come out. Basically, the one time that I got to sit with Sam Witwer and talk with him and Dave Filoni for a long time. I mean, before a session, we we just sat and chatted. Um, I heard the reasons why to and why not to see that movie, and uh, and then I, and so many others had opinions about it, and I was like, well, I'll just wait and see it and when I can, and and then I got so busy, I never got to see it in the theater, and I still haven't rented it or purchased it, so I can't even follow up with that. Wow. I know, I know, but I, in my defense, like I, I have a three-year-old, and. Uh, am expecting another one in about four weeks. So uh, movies are kind of they get pushed down onto the the low the low priority scale, which really sucks. Because I used to I used to watch movies, you know, at midnight when they would be released, and uh, you know, like the Oscars are coming up tomorrow. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm not sure when this will air, but as of today, the Oscars are tomorrow. Um, and I've been trying to catch up on all my Oscar films this week. So I watched Flight last night. I watched, uh, um, uh, what did I watch? Wreck-It Ralph. I watched um, Skyfall this week. I'm I'm really trying to cram them in. <laughs> so. Did you enjoy Wreck-It Ralph? I did. I enjoyed Wreck-It Ralph a lot. I and it was intriguing because I I was curious to watch it with my daughter because she really doesn't know what a a video game is and I on the other hand grew up in the 80s with an Atari and you know love video games and work in the video game world so I loved Jane Lynch's character she was awesome and um and Ralph was really well done and and Sarah Silverman was wonderful the voice acting was really good and the animation was was really fun. I want to, it's one of those movies that I want to see again, um, so that I can, cause I think I was, Oh God, my child's going to be scared of the cyber bugs, you know? Uh, <laughs> but now next time when I get to watch it, I, I will know she can handle it and I can, uh, I can enjoy it. 
What about Alan Tudyk basically resurrecting Ed Wynn from the dead? <laughs> it's a good time. Seriously, right? I thought I thought that guy, I was like, this guy. No way that guy is still alive. He's he has to be dead. There's no way he's alive. And like Alan Tudyk, I'm like what the heck? Mm-hmm. How did this happen? Mm-hmm. No, no, no. There were things uh, pulled uh, pulled way out for that film. Sugar Rush was excellent. It was really good. It was great. And do you know what Cubert is? Did you ever play Cubert? I know the character, but I never played it. You never played Cubert? I don't think so. Yeah, Cubert was one of my favorites. For some reason, the first time I saw Cubert, I actually thought it was Number Cruncher, and I was like, "Is that the number and word cruncher from elementary school?" <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I, I enjoyed that. Like, the more you see that movie, the more references you get, and the better it is. Because there's, as I remember, Disney was talking about how um, in most of the movies they have about eighty character models. Yeah. And that movie they had over well over two hundred. It's a record for that type of movie. Right. And, I believe it because there's tons of characters. You can in the background is like, oh look, there's M Bison, there's more, there's Ken, there's Ryu. Oh look, there's Sonic, there's Tails. Yeah. You just see all these like characters there that you don't necessarily always see the first time through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's why I want to see it again. Those details are. I mean, it was definitely thoughtfully a thoughtfully crafted film with the, a love of uh, video games and. Uh, yeah, I'll, I, I will watch that again. And I promise I'll see Prometheus and uh, let you guys know what I think of it. Because I, I am a huge Alien and Aliens fan. And whenever that is on, like, I will watch it, even though I own it. You know, it's like, it's like The Godfather. I own the DVDs, but when The Godfather's on, I just leave it on. No matter how bad the Prometheus commercials on the AMC most... are. <laughs> Prometheus is the most beautiful movie of the year. Like, I fully expect him to win Best Special Effects tomorrow because it's it's a beautiful movie. Yeah. With its own issues, but it's a beautiful film. Yeah, I did hear it was lovely, and uh, but the the plot was the more the problem. <laughs> so I'm yeah, the plot was fine. The plot's fine, and the characters are just stupid people. <laughs> we'll go with that. So, um, you know, you you said you were seeing all these other Oscar movies. What did you think of of uh, Skyfall, the 50th anniversary of James Bond? Skyfall was really good. I I enjoyed it so much, and I don't want to I don't want to give the ending away for those of you who are listening. Did it hit you hard that. though? Did it hit you well? Um, yeah. I mean, for many different reasons, it hit some nice um, uh, nostalgic uh, nuances. And um, emotionally, I mean, I was, yeah, it was, I can't believe a lot of the things that happened, happened. And they tied it in really well with Dr. No. Like, if you know the beginning of Dr. No mm-hmm. and the ending of mm-hmm. Skyfall, mm-hmm. wow. Right? Jeremiah, you're giving everything away now. That's not really giving much away. I guess not. Well, and I and I like it. that I, Scott. You know how sometimes when you're watching a movie, it feels like, oh, that was the fake ending, and now this is the real ending. It felt like there were about four different endings in Skyfall, but they were really good endings. They weren't the type of endings that you're like, come on, will the movie end already? Like you didn't want it to end. I agree. Yeah. So, so I guess my question for you then is, um, tomorrow's Academy Awards, which movie do you want to win Best Picture? Uh, I can't I, – I really don't know because I haven't seen I – can't, I can't say because I haven't seen Lincoln. <laughs> ah. Um, have you seen Lincoln? I have seen Lincoln. What did you think? Um, it's Spielberg's best movie in a long time. I can definitely yeah. see why people really, really like it. It's really well made. And Daniel Lee Lewis, I, I think what they did is actually got a time machine and switched places with Daniel Lee Lewis and Abraham Lincoln. Actually, had Abraham Lincoln be there because he is, wow, like that is Abraham Lincoln for me. And, yeah. uh, you know, some people might might disagree because it, you know, it focuses a lot on politics and a lot on, you know, the speeches and and the heroicness of a guy. You know, the, the guy we idolize, they put that picture in front of us, and some people yeah. don't necessarily like that. Yeah. But it's very well made. Um, though I am personally rooting for Argo just because I want to see Ben Affleck give the finger to the director of the Academy for not giving him directors. Yeah, I am baffled why he was not nominated for Best Director. And I, I have seen Argo, and I loved it. I thought it was really good. And it was very well directed. And it was very – I mean, the look of the film, he, he made you feel like you were pulled back to that era without it – without – it even feeling like a period film. Like, you know how sometimes when you're watching a period film, you're like, oh, this is very staged to be in that time, fr- within that time frame as far as the wardrobe and and things like that. But the the way that it was shot, I mean, it was shot beautifully. The cinematography was gorgeous. And uh, I really liked the story. And I, 
I, I really don't have any problems with Argo. I think Argo would be a really great winner. I, I've not seen Django. I've heard fantastic things about Django. And I've I really want to see I've heard things about Django. And yeah. I've heard great things. I've also heard that it's too long. So. Yeah, well, you know. Yeah. It's Tarantino. His movies tend to be really long, and you either really love them or you think they're excessive. Yeah. Well, and I, I was a big fan of Inglorious Bastards, and I know a lot of people were on, on the fence about that film, but um, uh, I like Tarantino so much. I really love Pulp Fiction. I love Kill Bill, Volume 1 and 2. You can't just see one. You have to see both. To those of you who have only seen Volume 1, stop it. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I do want to see that. I feel like tonight, like, I need to watch Silver Linings Playbook and uh, oh, Zero Dark. I don't know how I've watched Zero, Zero Dark, Dark 30. Maybe. I do have Silver Linings Playbook at home. I could actually watch that. But, um, oh, and Les Mis. I loved Les Les Mis was Les Mis is the epitome of go big or go home. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. And so it may it may sweep a lot of awards. Um but I, my I, friend, if you know the story of Lame Is, one of my friends was just like, it was like, why are I watching a movie that's so sad? I'm like, it's called The Miserable Ones. Why the heck would you think it's supposed to be happy? It is, and that's kind of why I haven't sat down and watched it. <laughs> but I oh, mean, that's I, so I, I mean, good. I, 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 and I know the music. I know the soundtrack. I, I'm, a, I'm a musical theater person. I have actually never seen a staged version of Lame Is, which is very bizarre. Even though I know the the, the music, and I um, I've seen the film that Liam was it Liam Neeson did. Yeah, Liam um, Neeson with Jeffrey Rush and Uma Thurman. Yeah, yeah. I mean that was in the in the nineties, and that was the non musical version of the film, and uh, of the story, and it was a good it was a good film, but um, yeah. So I'll have to lay miserable it up. <laughs> so since you have a you know a. Uh, uh, a three-year-old and so on mm -hmm. um i'm assuming you've probably seen a lot more of the animated pictures that were nominated yeah i mean i she's a huge pixar girl so she likes she's <laughs> it's so cute because a lot of her friends are into princesses but she's a cars girl so i've seen cars one and two a million times and she cannot wait for the movie plane t planes to come out which i i'm trying to figure out <laughs> what exactly is happening there i think it's coming out in august and at first, it was like, Pixar is doing it. No, just Disney without Pixar and this and that. And there was Please be this. better than Cars 2. Do I think what? Yeah, the, the movie? Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, Cars 1 is definitely better than Cars 2, but Cars 2 is enjoyable. It's enjoyable, but it's like you'll watch it like toys, 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 more toys. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed yeah. all the animated movies nominated this year because we had Brave, Wreck-It Ralph, Frank and Weenie, Paranorman, Pirates, Band of Misfits. They were all very entertaining, well-made. Well, I, I have to say I'm a huge Frank and Weenie fan because I'm a Tim Burton junkie. So um, I, I, you could see the, the passion and the love with which he made that film and why he wanted to tell that story. And um, I guess either you hated it or you loved it because I, you know, when we walked out of the, the movie theater, my husband was like, I can't believe you made me go see that. And I was like, are you kidding me? That was phenomenal. <laughs> so, uh, you know, to, to each his own on that one. But I have not seen Brave yet. This is how behind I am. Like, I would love to see Brave. Love. And I haven't seen it. Uh, I would say Wreck-It Ralph is better than Brave. See, but, well, um, I'm glad I've seen Wreck-It Ralph. There you go. And uh, if your husband didn't like Frank and Weenie, he might like Paranorman better because that seems to be the same similar type of film, but uh, more modern sensibility about it. Okay. We'll what would you say to that, Matt? Would you say Paranorman might be more uh, appealing to uh, people who like current movies over Frank and Weenie? Um. Yeah, definitely. But you know, I thought Paranorman was better than Frank and Weenie, but Wreck-It Ralph was definitely the best of the lot. And Paper Man at the beginning was uh, an excellent awesome. little short. That is uh, like for a college crowd here. We were just that was perfect for the college crowd. My goodness. How do you guys uh, view the animated shorts? Like, where do you? How do you get a hold of them? How do you watch them? Usually, the I don't the see them. In, I see them at the beginning of yeah. movie. Usually, um, some of them I pop when they pop up on like Deadline.com or something like that. I was like, oh, here it is. But I haven't seen like the Simpsons short that's supposedly also really good. But I did see Paper Man and the other two i think hmm. but usually they pop up on deadline or something and i'm like oh here they are yeah yeah 
Yeah, you kind of have to go looking for them, though. I, I've always wished that it's a little easier access to, I mean, I'll buy them. I'll buy them and watch them. But the, the short animated films, I love. I love. If they're Pixar, they're easy to find. If they're not, uh, don't know how to find them. Yeah. Well, Pixar also, finally, they started releasing their shorts on DVDs. So you can buy a DVD collection of them, which is great. Yeah. We like Lexo. Okay, so it... We like the little bouncy lamp in our house. <laughs> to bound, 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 and rebound. Yes, exactly. The I in Pixar. <laughs> okay, so um, I, I guess another follow-up about movies is last summer, you you know, Prometheus was one film you were really looking forward to, and the other one you said was Men in Black 3. Did you get to see that one at all? I did. I've seen it several times since then, actually. Same here. I saw it like three times in theaters in three different states. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it was good. We, we saw it in the theater, and then uh, I saw it um, a couple of times on Blu-ray, and uh, it was... Uh, I think it lived up to my own hype. I quite enjoyed it. And I cried I when I went really to see it in the theater. I cried. That means they did their job right. It finally had a good villain. And also, like, when we were done, we were leaving going, what if this is the future with this happening, this happening, this happening? Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> right? Yeah. That shows that it was a very well-made movie. It really, it really was. And I agree with the villain. It was just enough uh, of a you know, a comedy, but he was also scary. He was a freaky, freaky villain. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to adapt his alien ways to our human uh, uh, little tiny um, emotional and social cues. Indeed. Awkward. So this past couple months, Matt here has been enjoying one of your recent projects quite a lot. It didn't take me months. Uh -huh. Well, I'm saying the past couple months you've been talking about Which it. Which one? Yeah. Dishonored. The one you were talking about last summer. With, yep, Dishonored. <laughs> nice. How I, uh, did you like it? Oh, I loved it. It was great. I did a uh, no kill, no detection, no powers run through. So I was like trying to avoid everything. And I had actually forgotten that you were in it. And I'm watching the credits roll and I see Anna Graves. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> I know that name. So I texted Jeremiah right away. It's like, dude, I forgot she was in here. Nice. Yeah. It was good I, though. I uh, I didn't kill you. Oh, good. Well, <laughs> so, I guess good. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, Lady Boyle. Yeah. I'm um, not entirely certain what happened to your character is better than killing her. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I heard it's a, a lovely looking game as well. I have not played it yet. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've talked to a lot of people who do, and I'm uh, it's on my list of games to to be playing. Yeah, for sure. I'd, su I'd suggest killing people the first time you play through. It's a little easier. Okay. <laughs> it might not be the best game to play in front of a three-year-old. Yeah, that too. Well, and that's the problem for us parents. We have to play our video games after the kids go to bed, you know. So that's okay. You find time. You do. You have to make it. <laughs> but as you said last time in your Demon Hunter voice, I require more evil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm low on hatred. That's <laughs> so you just yeah. Uh, uh, so what are you currently working on now as far as video games and stuff go? Because I know you said you know you have another one coming out, you know, like, you know another baby next month, and so I'm assuming you aren't doing stuff right this second. Yeah, I'll but... have a baby that's premiering in uh, actually the end of March, <laughs> somewhere around Brian's birthday. So we're all looking forward to that that uh, viewing. Um, <laughs> but yes, but uh, but I the nice part about voiceover work and being a mom is that you can. Um, do both, honestly. Like I, I do, I do a lot of auditions from home. I do, um, you know, I work whenever I can or whenever can ha make time. And um, I think after my daughter was born, I was back at work seven days after she was born. I did two commercials, and uh, you know, it was a, a relatively short, easy day. My husband was like driving her around, you know and I would come out of the recording studio and take care of her and then come go back in. And it's, it's, it's a truly a blessing. It's amazing. But, um, so I, I hope that that will be possible this time as well. It'll be a little harder because the more kids you have, the more complicated life is as far as scheduling and kids want, you know, their agenda to be first. So, um, do you find yourself wanting to do more projects that, um, 
or more say kid appropriate or stuff that your kids will be able to watch rather than yeah you know, yeah I do general. like I kind of it's funny I was just thinking about Brendan Fraser recently you know how he's kind of gone toward the all kids you know he does still like action adventure stuff but he does a lot of VO work for for animated things and he does a lot of like Disney films and um but when when I was growing up I mean Brendan Fraser was sort of a more serious actor uh, like as far as dramas and things like that go and um but he's a dad and he I, I understand like you want to do projects that children enjoy and can um get something out of and you know yeah do I do a lot of video games and and um other things that have content that you know aren't aren't meant to be uplifting or teach a life lesson yes but they're for they're for older adults who can discern between good and bad um, so it's up to you as a parent, I think, to set those guidelines for your kids. But, um, but yeah, whenever I do something that I can share with her, it's very exciting. And she actually asked, asked me recently, she said, you know, mommy, what's, what's fighting? And I explained to her what a fight is. And then I said, well, well you know, why do you ask? And she said, well, why is there fighting in Star Wars, the Clone Wars? And I said, <laughs> oh, I said, well, honey, you know, the way that, that the story of Star Wars is written is there's good and there's bad. And it's actually quite entertaining to sometimes see the, the good guy try to figure out how to save all the other good people from the bad guy. I said, uh, that's, you know, the point of, of um, TV shows and films and books. You know, you have your heroine, you have your villain. And I, like, I, she kind of gets it. Like, she gets it. She loves to read and loves storytelling. But I just thought that was hilarious that she is clearly upset that I will not let her watch Star Wars because there's fighting in it. That's what I tell her. <laughs> Someday she'll be able to sit down with the Blu-ray set and watch all seasons. Someday. I, it will It will happen. And I feel like season five had a lot of um, more kid-friendly episodes. The droids episodes were, I, I thought, really cool and, and interesting um, kind of off and the youngling arc and the youngling arc the youngling arc was great the I actually the first episode of the youngling arc I let my daughter watch that that was the first full episode that I've let her watch because um, I felt like she could totally handle that and she loved it totally dug it so so yeah I, I, I yeah I guess the rest of the youngling arc you have Hondo doing crazy things and then you have <laughs> the doctor or David Tennant, um, the droid, <laughs> <laughs> helping save the day. Maybe that's what it becomes. Maybe when he stops being the Doctor, he'll become a robot and join the Star Wars universe. That could be a good mashup. <laughs> they did have Star Trek and Doctor Who mashup, so maybe they can have Star Wars and Doctor Who somehow. Right? That would be amazing. Don't know how it'll work, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's where they have the season finale, has, has Ahsoka get rescued by a TARDIS. Like, what? <laughs> Dude, next week it could happen. Oh, awesome. I hope Ashley. I hope Ashley puts that on a T-shirt for her universe. I would wear that. <laughs> well, Ahsoka being rescued by the Tardis. Sure, why not? Little little Doctor Who Star Wars mashup shirt. She needs I think it would be a lot of fun. <laughs> so, so Matt, you've been here nice and quiet, and uh, you know you're my guest on this episode too. So, do you have any questions for for Anna here that you'd like her to answer? Since I know you loved the last interview, so. Do you have anything you'd like to know? See, Jeremiah, I thought you had all that part taken care of, and I was just going to listen and comment and here to chat get to, and get out, to kick Matt. back and relax. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just curious. Do you have anything you want to know? Um, nothing specific. I mean, you've covered almost everything. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> well, I will, I will say specifically, like, recording that last Mandalorian arc was pretty incredible, and to... Uh, get to work on that material and being a part of those episodes specifically was uh i just am almost speechless apparently i it's it's amazing it really is it was well they were amazing so i have episodes. a question about recording i guess sure please um, in, in when you do voice acting um sometimes you're you know you do re sessions alone sometimes you do sessions with other people mm -hmm. and i know some actors like um Sam Witwer are really animate when they're voice acting. Oh, yeah. Lots of movement and facial expressions. Do you have any experiences doing voice work for any project you've done where either yourself or someone else gets really animate and it's really hilarious to watch them do it, like, or really distracting sometimes with how <laughs> I, into the character they're getting? Well, yeah, and, and I've, I've been guilty of that, but I, I've worked with guys that do that, and um, it's uh, – 
you do your best to keep your composure and, uh, you know, A, it's not polite to stare. So uh, you kind of um, continue looking at your script and know what's happening, but you, you don't... Uh, you, you don't uh, comment or, or uh, make a face. <laughs> it's uh, it's part it's part of the gig. It's part of the fun part of the gig because um, on camera actors don't have to do as much to get a lot across because you have the camera right there, you know, in your face. And um, uh, with voice acting, it requires a lot more animation throughout your body um, to get that expression out. And depending on what type of voice you're doing and what type of character. I mean, obviously, like watching Dee Bradley Baker do some of the range of uh, alien noises and, and um, it, the way that he finds it and he kind of plays around with it and he'll snort and, um, you know, do different sounds before he finds the right one. And, and then he'll say, oh, well, how about this? How about that? You know, and offer some some choices. And and then, you know, Dave Filoni's like, yeah, yeah, yeah perfect. You know, and um, Corey Burton, same thing. He's a man of many, many, many voices and, and uh, sounds and I learn a lot by watching those guys. Like I really do. And I, I go home and I practice making animal noises and, and snorts and grunts and monster noises and aliens. I mean, I have to, it's my job. Did you ever do an episode where you had to hear the voice actor for zero, the hut do his voice and did it ever crack you up? Cause that voice is just hilarious. <laughs> no, I've not been, have I been in there when he's recorded zero? I don't think so. I don't remember if I have. Um, that's a good question. Yeah, I, I really don't remember. Because that voice coming from who it is, is just like, are you serious? Cad Bane and Zero the Hut is the same person? <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I feel like there was last year, and I, and, and I've been sitting, you know, next to Corey when he switched back and forth between, you know, some characters into others. I don't want to say who, because I don't want to give anything away. <laughs> Count Dooku. But yeah, I've I've seen him definitely. I've seen him do Count Dooku. I've seen I've seen him do Cad Bane. Um, I I'm pretty sure I've seen him do Zero at some point or another. But um, uh, yeah. The what was the um, you were asking about? You know how how many of us are in the in the uh, studio? The there was Eminence and then Shades of Reason and then what was the the Mandalorian arc, the names of the episodes. Lawless. Lawless. So for uh, Shades of Reason, it was it was literally just uh, Julian and Corey and myself. And um, we, uh, because Sam wasn't able to be there, um, Clancy wasn't able to be there, so they were doing their stuff separately. And Corey was filling in for a lot of parts, and um, it, it was just... It was hilarious and fun to have just the three of us, and uh, we were doing all of the crowd Walla Walla stuff and the angry Mandalorians shouting out against Death Watch and then shouting out against Duchess Satine, and um, they literally took our voices and made it sound like you know thousands. That was that was a that was a really fun day, I have to say, and I, I quite enjoyed doing the scene uh, with Julian, he, who played Almec, uh, Prime Minister Almec, um, where we're talking to each other through the the uh, jail cell it was a good scene indeed it, that whole arc was like there there's some arcs that you see and you're there's a lot of fan expectation a lot of say fanboy um anticipation mm -hmm. and the mandalorian arc with darth maul was a huge one and usually when it comes to clone wars we have to like temper our expectations or anticipation because like <laughs> sometimes they can't fulfill what we what we see in our head like for example, like the first time Boba Fett was brought in there, like the images we had on our head with, you know, with the kid Boba Fett getting revenge and some of the stuff you do were not realistic for a kid Boba Fett. Right. They, uh -huh. they just weren't going to happen. So and that was the first arc that I recall, like my expectations weren't met. They were exceeded and blown out of the water as I sat there slap shot. <laughs> yeah. Especially the way it, it ended. It was just like, oh. Yeah. 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 I can't wait to see more Boba Fett. <laughs> That's what next season's about. That's what they've teased. Good times. Indeed. So, you know, you've had a, uh, you know, it's been one, a year and a half now since you finished recording that stuff. I'm assuming you're still doing stuff with Clone Wars. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Jeremiah, I don't think she can tell us that. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's why I said I'm assuming. No, uh, yeah, I, I, we know I did. Because season I six is being recorded, and season six has been worked on for quite a long time because they've talked about it for a while. Mm-hmm. And we're assuming more stuff is going from there. We just don't know when it's coming. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we know they've been working on season six. James Arnold Taylor all the time says, recording more Clone Wars today. Right. Okay. Well, that's yeah. true. He does, doesn't he? We just, we just don't know what it is, and I'm not going to ask you what's coming up. You don't know where you're going to see it or how, but you're going to see it someday. Uh, Maybe it'll be beam into our brains. And, and I mean, Dave uh, posted a picture of, of myself and some other people working on some shows last uh, last summer. So, yeah, I, I did get the fortunate um, uh, ability to work on, on uh, f- a few more shows last summer and um, have gone in and done... You know, sometimes when you're in there, you're you're in there with people who aren't in an episode with you. So if someone sees a picture with you, you're, you you know, along with somebody else, they're like, oh, what are they doing in an episode together, you know? But maybe we're playing different characters or maybe we're uh, just there to do ADR and and then, then the next, you know, person is coming in after you to do a session after. So um, things like that happen all the time. But uh, yeah. But they utilize us as actors, you know, come in and if they need you for extra voices or to be this droid or this alien or this, you know, whatever, uh, we're there to, to do the job definitely. And happily. So. So you said you do lots of noises and voices around the house, you know, to, I'm assuming just to practice sometimes to entertain your, <laughs> you know, your child. So are there any voices that you're working on now that you'd like to show off or <laughs> like to, to have us here? Cause I know you voice actors, the ones we've talked to, tend to practice voices all the time. And sometimes they always have something they're working on or some weird voice that they just want to get out of their head. No, you know what? They keep those all secret and private. And uh, I already get uh, belittled by my daughter enough. Cause she says, mom, use your real voice. I like your real voice. That's what she says. <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I, it depends on the moment or the time or, What's happening, you know? You never know what's going to come out of your mouth when you're working on something. But uh, it's uh, <laughs> it, it, uh, it has a range of symphonic uh, ability. I, um, <laughs> I, 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 I uh, you know, do a lot of uh, what people who want to get into voiceover, I say, you know, are you, are you a singer? They're like, no, not so much. Well, maybe you should, even if you're not the world's best singer, take some vocal lessons because if you can learn to adjust the pitch of your voice from lower to higher, there's a, a range of um, sounds there that you can play with. And um, my everyday normal speaking voice is really actually nothing special. I don't particularly like the sound of my voice, but um, if you tell me what you need, who the character is, something about her, or it, <laughs> if it's not human, um, then, you know, I can create that sound. So, you know, with vocal, another thing with uh, vocal coach is, uh, you know, lots of people, you know, it happens with singers, especially with uh, rock singers that try to do growling, you know, if they don't know how to take care of the vocal cords, they can lose their voice really easy. And so people that do singing and that do you know, vocal work, they have the vocal coaches to make sure they don't destroy their vocal cords. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it can be very dangerous. So you have to know what you're doing and try to um, know your own limitations because everybody has a different limitation when it comes to your voice. And you, I mean, you know, you find that out when you go to a loud party and you're, you know, yelling at the person next to you just to be able to hear your, you know, yourself get the words out. And then the next day you have no voice. You're like, what happened? Um, It's, uh, you have to know how to speak loudly or how to how to be heard without uh, damaging yourself i imagine it takes a lot of training for uh, james arnold taylor to do johnny test you know all the time yeah oh yeah right i mean i can't imagine doing that voice all the time and you have to you have to figure out the comfort level with which to do it and he has found that i'm sure so um because otherwise he'd he'd be in trouble if he has back-to-back sessions and there's the guy who does uh Yakko, <laughs> Animaniacs. He does that voice all the time, but that that's not a normal voice, and so it's like one that he really has to train his voice to be able to do. Because I remember we, we've talked to other voice actors, like um Richard Epcar was on, and he was talking about how he had to do a Call of Duty game, which involved him lots of screaming. Then he had to go record for uh, Legend of Korra, but because of the screaming, he couldn't do Legend of Korra, but his, vo- his vocal cords have been so shot by then that he can only do like a deep voice like this. <laughs> and apparently that was the exact voice they needed for their characters who got really lucky, but he was just saying how like 
a lot of these sessions is like destroy your vocal cords, and if you have too many pack close together, you are very limited in what you can do, even if you're the best, because yeah, oh yeah, some of the things they want you to do, you just you can't scream that, you can't scream all day and still expect to do all your voices all the time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's the best when you when you can actually um, uh, specifically request and schedule a like a uh, especially with video games that that uh, session be at the end of the day, and even better at the end of the day on a Friday. Because then you have Saturday and Sunday to recuperate um, because you, you're doing these blood curdling screams and um, uh, death sounds and falls and, um, you know, really fun vocal stuff to do <laughs> as far as, you know, just, just getting to be that loud and having somebody engineering it and, re and recording it. And, uh, but it can be dangerous. So do you have fun doing death screams? Because in a lot of your games you've done and TV shows, you do, you know, you have you've had the opportunity to do quite a few death screams yeah. or dying noises. Yeah. Do you have fun doing those? Oh yeah, oh yeah, they're fun. I, I, you know, I don't recommend anyone dying or being killed, but I, I recommend uh, every now and then just letting out a good, good scream, a good uh, blood curdling scream, or a good. Uh, uh, it's very, um, I don't know. I, I'm a pretty even emotional person anyway, but there's definitely something therapeutic about it. After you leave that session, you're like, all right, right on. Whew. <laughs> so is your, do you have a, a favorite, um, we'll say favorite death of yours since you've you know, done a lot? <laughs> do, you have, do you have any that you like more than others or some that you say are exceptionally well done the way like, I don't know, like in Diablo, for example, Diablo 3, you know, when the Demon Hunter dies, there's the scream. Right. And you die. You know, I'm assuming in Dishonor is the same thing. And of course, you have you know Satine's death and others. Is there any that you particularly thought was very well done, you know, very I, dramatic, Shakespearean? It's funny because I would actually love to hear. There were some stuff I did for Dishonored. Uh, since we're talking about it, since Matt likes it, uh, where Lady Boyle uh, gets eaten by rats and uh, dies that way. I would love to hear She's how that right. ended up that. sounding. <laughs> You'll have to tr just try it and let me know yeah. how it sounds, because that was that was a hard one to do. Um, I would imagine. <laughs> you mean you've never been eaten by rats before? <laughs> you know, sometimes you have to use your imagination because these things have never actually happened to me. Um, <gasps> I know. Wow. I know. As one would hope, you had never been eaten by rats. But um, you have to use your imagination. Uh, I'm trying to think. There were definitely some fun. I, I always think of um, Bioshock 2. Uh, I, I had to make some sounds where I was being frozen, but it was almost like, you know, they, they really wanted something like guttural, like I was being frozen from the inside out. So it was like, almost like you could hear my insides freezing and then the sound comes up your throat and out and it's a very painful scream, yet you're, okay. you're being frozen. And, uh, yeah, there was a, there was a lot of different deaths that I did for that, for that game. <laughs> but then I've done, uh, like Command and Conquer and... Um, uh, different stuff in Call of Duty. I did Modern Warfare um, 1, 2, and 3 and um, did a lot of screaming and yelling and and uh, stuff like that. A a XCOM uh, Soldier in XCOM and, uh, and I just worked on the new XCOM game actually too, which was really cool. Um, but yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I did a little little uh, Thing actually that aired a couple of weeks ago there was an episode where I played uh, uh, you know Leonardo on the show likes to watch soap operas so I play Celestial one of the girls on on his favorite throwback retro sci-fi um, uh, cartoon that he watches and my character gets uh, zapped so I remember having to do a whole range of you know because <laughs> when one gets vaporized, there are you know things that happen to your body. So in a lot of uh, you know uh, video games and in shows, if you look at the cast list, you're like, you know, some of the names you look at are like, wow, like Christopher Lee was in this, mm -hmm. or this big actor was involved in this. Have you ever like gone through a a TV show or a game that you know you recorded your stuff for, and then looked at it later, looked at the credits, went. 
man, why didn't I record with that person or that <laughs> person? Or, what the heck? Why can't I? Why would I deny I know that person was there? Oh, yeah, yeah. And and sometimes they'll tell you, like, who's going to be in, like, I um, I remember the director was like, Susan Sarandon is in uh, in Dishonored. I was like, what? Right on. When is she coming in? Can I just hang out in the lobby or whatever? I, you know, it, and it's cool when you get to actually meet them but um but yeah i mean celebrity talent is definitely a a draw for for games tv shows and movies and and then we smaller smaller small time actors just come on in and fill in the filler parts <laughs> <laughs> but you guys do tend to do most of the the lifting because when it, one example we got was from uh, richard epcar who was saying how he was recording for kingdom hearts mm -hmm. And how Christopher Lee came in there. And, you know, with most voice actors, as we've heard time and time again, you know, you record something, they're like, uh, do it this way. Or do it faster. Do it slow. Try this accent, you know. Right. You know, they might tell you to do multiple takes. But Christopher Lee, they told him not to do it once. And he said something along the lines of, now listen here, Sonny. I'm going to read this script once and you will record it. When I'm done, I am leaving. <laughs> here you go. And starts talking. How very Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm assuming people like you wouldn't try that. It's just, oh, uh, I need work. Well, I enjoy being a voice actor, and I enjoy, for myself, trying out different um, different ways of reading characters. So, yeah, I mean, we all have our limitations to which uh, when you're in the in the booth, as long as they're utilizing your time to the best of your ability and you're, you're giving them what they need, I think that's what's important. You have to have a mutual respect for the relationship and why you're there to do the job just because... I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess I've heard stories of that, you know, where there are celebrities that come in and have more demands or won't do as much. But, you know, maybe their their time is, is valuable and they have to move on and they're only getting so many figures and uh, that's what they deem important. So, you know, eat to, to each his own when, when it comes to that. I, I mean, if I... If I ever got to that point in my career, I, I, I would think as long as long as it serves the project and, um, um, you know, if, as, if, I, if I don't feel like someone is wasting my time, like if they're still searching for what they want, but they don't want, obviously that's frustrating creatively when you're when you're in any situation. Um, so you hopefully the people that you're collaborating with know what they want. OK, so Matt, do you have any questions yet? Come on, um, Matt. Yeah, you know you can do it. Yeah, doing your questions. Um, I guess one thing that I was thinking of when you were talking earlier with uh, the whole voice acting thing, if you are in an episode and you have to play multiple characters and like they're in the same scene, do you just go back and forth between the two or do you record one and then the other? Or how does that work out? I've seen it done both ways, and I've done it both ways, and it depends on how... Um, closely related those voices might be if they're completely different then you just take a second you reset you do the next line as the separate character and then you you know okay. you move on yeah but it's definitely you you, you can you, you train yourself to be able to switch between the voices especially if it's a character that you do a lot you know so if it's a character that you're you do weekly for for the same show i mean you're used to switching from that voice into another voice but um so for the guys that have done you know the simpsons and family guy and i mean seth MacFarlane knows those voices you know inside and out because he <laughs> created them he mm -hmm. has been doing them for years and years and years and and uh can flip them just like a coin nice so have you ever had a, a voice which is or a, one that you could do as an example anyway or tell us as an example that's been like particularly really hard like one that you can't just switch to really easy because it's a really hard voice to do any voice that's been particularly challenging that you were able to get done for a project and that you're that you're i guess proud of uh that's a good question i'm trying to think of like a specifically one like a specific one that would be i'm trying to think of something that has been challenging in that in that way um more so when you're playing things that uh, aren't human yes yes you have to you have to reset you have to think about it more so than oh i'm going you know from playing an old woman to a young girl but um uh, sorry i have no specific examples to give you though it happens yeah so uh, jennifer hill mentioned how one thing that she challenge she has is uh when she records 
um, she watches the games that she does or the projects she does, and then she's like, oh, I could have done so much better, or she just didn't like hearing herself. Mm -hmm. Do you like actually hearing yourself in the games that you do or shows that you do, or do you tend to go, oh, I wish I had known that was coming? <laughs> I do a lot more cringing than I do celebrating, <laughs> but that's just because that's what we do when we... Uh, you know, and, and then sometimes you'll hear something and you're like, "Ooh, yeah, that worked," or "Oh, God, like like that worked better than I thought it would." Um, but it, it it all depends on the way that it was um, explained to you, and then the way that it was executed, then the way that it was recorded, and then the way that it's mixed. Because sometimes you'll hear um, your own voice work in uh, a piece. It could just be as simple as a commercial or a promo, and um, you know, uh, sometimes when uh, pr promos aren't mixed correctly with the the sounds of the, uh, you know, let's, let's say the movie trailer with the VO and the music, um, it can be frustrating because you're you're trying to figure out what's going on. But if it really cuts through and the VO works, then it's a good thing. Okay, so I have the two questions left, and if Matt has another one, we'll let him ask. But <laughs> so Matt's done. If, what if Matt like, gets no more chances. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, you know, playing uh, Guild Wars 2 the other day, and I believe I caught your voice several times in that game. Yeah. Several of the female characters. So um, you've recorded for a lot of, like, really big video games. Do you like recording for big video games where you play for major characters in the story and have, have a lot of – have a lot of uh, – you know, a lot of dialogue, but you can't really like. For example, let's see if I can word the question right. Like, for example, in games like Guild Wars and others, when you play a major character that you know has that stuff changed depending on what the characters choose, do you ever find it difficult to play a character that's there a lot, but you don't necessarily know like where their story is going because it's so player determined, or do you prefer a character that you play and you know exactly where their story is going by the dialogue because it's more linear style game? If it's more linear style, then yeah, it's fo it's easier for you to follow when you're behind the microphone, but. As long as the, it's being explained to you correctly, and, and that's the best, is when you have – you're sitting in the room with the writers, with the game creators, with the, the voice director, with one of the producers, you know, and they're all willing to tell you, all right, this is what's happening in this scene. And too much information is, for me, very, very welcomed because um, I enjoy having that backstory. Um, because it gives you a different intention with which to read the lines. Even if uh, the player is only going to hear my character say five or six lines in that scene, I'm able to give those five or six uh, lines uh, a little bit of a, you know, um, like an ebb and flow so that the scene isn't flat, because that's the worst, is when you're playing a game and it doesn't go anywhere. The characters aren't evolving the story is not evolving um you know what's the point so you want it to be you want it to have that ebb and flow and that up and down and that nice um little uh, bits of color that you don't expect sometimes so i i you know in guild wars i i worked on that game for in guild wars 2 i think i worked on it for three years off and on so i would come in every so you know often and and at first, you're like, okay, who is this again? And, you know, they play the voice reference of, of the character. And, and then after a while, you get to know who they are. But when it's like three and four months in between recording, it, it can get tricky and you need to be reminded um, of what's happening with it, that character in the, within the story so that it makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So um, I guess uh... – I have one last question, and I have one request. Excellent. So, what last the last question would be is, uh, what are you currently up to? Like, you have you, know, you can plug anything you want. Like, what are your current projects other than, of course, you know, baby being due next month? Anything that <laughs> we, the fans can look forward to um, for like stuff still coming out or shows still coming out or stuff we can look at for the store in the stores now um, to go see your work? Yeah. Well, there's uh, the Nike Fitness game that I worked on for the last year and a half. Actually, just came out. It's for uh, Connect. So, if you work out at home and if you have an xbox and you have you have a connect then um i highly recommend this game it's really awesome and i'm actually looking forward to using it to the fullest of my ability after i have um my my little boy here so um it, to play a fitness trainer in a video game was tricky because um uh it was based on the movements and the exercises of a real trainer who is awesome. And I took the voice uh, along with the game creators and, and created, you know, um, something similar, but um, something that would be easy to listen to 
and work out with at home uh, that you weren't like, you know, yelling at or telling to shut up because she's your trainer. You should want to follow along. You should want to do uh, what those exercises are doing. Um, but we had an incredible amount of material to record for that. And uh, it was so I'm, I'm very happy with the way that that turned out. Um, let's see what else. The, oh, well, speaking of James Arnold Taylor, the newest uh, Ratchet and Clank game. You should pick that up for uh, PS3 or, or it's downloadable. Um, then uh, I play the voice of the computer in there and as well as a bunch of smaller little fun retro throwbacks to old Ratchet and Clank games. And uh, I'm the, I can't remember the villain's name in that, uh, in that game, but I play his mom and a lot of fun stuff. Um, but yeah, a lot of stuff I can't actually even talk about yet. <laughs> You can't even breathe a hint about them yet. Well, if games, we yeah, I mean, if games and, and shows aren't um, uh, already announced, then it's uh, it's not up to me to decide when that information comes out. That's that, that's that's fine. <laughs> well, we'll figure, we we know how this works. We've we've talked to enough people to know how how this works. <laughs> So I guess my, my request would be then, could you record a bumper for us, but in um, your Demon Hunter voice? Oh, yeah, sure. Something along the lines of like, you know, the this is the Demon Hunter um, searching for more hatred or something like that on Bombad Radio. <laughs> Let's try that. I like it. This is the female Demon Hunter. This is the, this is the Demon Hunter. I'm searching for more hatred on Bombad Radio. Your blood will fall like rain on Bombad Radio, Diablo 3. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was pretty cool. good. Do, do you have any suggestions for any, Matt? Since you played Dishonored and so on, I don't know what the voice is like in Dishonored. I haven't well, there was, They were very play. good. I mean, she's just a chick who I didn't kill because <laughs> I was being she's good. A chick. I don't well, remember what the Weeper Weeper voices sounded like. I did, well, I did oh, the Boyle they're, Sisters. They're like and, zombies. It was, yeah. They were they were creepy. You know, I mean, I... Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty... I didn't, was, I didn't like them. I tried to stay away from them. <laughs> <laughs> not a fan of The Walking Dead, Matt? Uh, well, I like killing The Walking Dead, but when you're trying not <laughs> to kill anything and they can detect you from, like, forever away, it's like, man, no, yeah. stop that. Oh, that's just annoying. Yeah. It's like the head crab guys in um, Half Life. <laughs> you just stay away from them because yeah. they're screaming terrifying <laughs> things at you, and you're like, ah, go away, go away, go away. Yeah. Or the witches in Left 4 Dead. <laughs> Never saw that. Don't know what that is. Yeah. You're, you're not missing much. They're, they're kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. But thank you for being on again. I, I wasn't aware that you were so close to having an, having another one. So yeah. Well, I don't I don't uh, you know talk about it on Facebook. Nobody cares. They just, we want to <laughs> talk about voiceover. So, um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Thank you. Oh, I bet you are. Mm -hmm. I know. I'm I'm pretty excited for this spring. And uh, we need to count down the days. <laughs> so I, I'm getting married in May, and so I'm like really like hyper excited oh, right now. But I have a semester to finish. That's Thank awesome. You. I have a semester of school to finish. Yeah. It's my last one. I graduate in April, and so it's like, must focus, but I must not focus. I'm, I, I'm just like a distracted child on Mountain Dew. Well, yeah, right? <laughs> you know what? And I, I find that big, big things in your life, you know, will happen back to back. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, this is going to be a big year for you with, uh, with what's happening. And it's, uh, that's great. Congratulations. A lot of movement. <laughs> yeah, and that means I'll take a break from podcasting in the summer, then come back in the fall with anything. We'll see what happens. <laughs> you will, and yep. by then you'll be ready. You'll be ready to. You'll be like, man, I want to dive into some fun stuff. That's not, you know, it's not about anything serious. It's just, it's, uh, it's good, entertaining, fun, and stuff that you're into. And that's, uh, that's why I, I enjoy talking about Star Wars because I am a Star Wars fan and I'm a Clone Wars fan, and I, um, you know, I. I don't, I don't just watch the shows that I, I'm like, oh, am I in today's episode? No, that's not <laughs> why I'm watching it. I watch the episodes because I want to I want to see what's going on on the show, and I totally dig it. So um. so as a Star Wars fan, one of my friends was talking today, episode seven villain. What if it was just a whole ton of clone Zillow Beasts that they discover? That, that what discovered? That what if they discovered the Emperor's secret stash of cloned <laughs> Zillow Beasts? <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> 
I think I'd squee with joy, but then half the fans would be like, what is this crap? Like, well, wait, you guys should watch how many Clone Zillow Wars. Beasts are we talking about here? Heard. Could anyone survive that? I mean, Zillow Beasts are pretty friggin' huge. <laughs> I don't know, but I think it would be pretty awesome. Okay, a family. We'll say two or three. <laughs> it's like, it's like you know, reintroducing the dinosaur to the uh, modern day population. Unfortunately, we're just too big to get along. You know, they're just too big for us to get along with them. So it's a good thing that T Rex in San Diego and Lost World just wanted to make friends with those people. Yeah, and they were just too scared. I believe it, but oh, sorry, stepped on you. Oops, sorry, you too. <laughs> I think that would be really fun. I want more Zillow Beasts and Clone Wars, but who knows? We might get them, might not. Yeah, yeah. I I think that that would be a, a, a fair request to uh, put out there and, and uh, get get some more Zillow Beasts. Rebel Force Radio wants kids there. I want Zillow Beasts. <laughs> <laughs> give me Zillow or give me death. I'm sure Dave Filoni wants more Zillow Beasts, too. He's a, he's a huge Godzilla fan, so... <laughs> okay well thank you for being on thank you for giving us your time and uh we wish you the best this episode should be up uh let's see this and this episode should be up in about a week week and a half um we're actually going to hit about two hundred fifty thousand downloads really soon and this is gonna be part of our hoorah Ooh, nice hoorah well thank you very much you guys it was good to talk to you again and i'll i'll talk to you again next year after we'll awesome. uh we'll see some more big things happening and then we'll uh we'll talk again <laughs> and good luck with uh, the new baby. <gasps> Thank you. <laughs> Take care. You too.